everyone. Welcome to talk to us today. I'm Simrit. And I'm Namita. And today we are starting our very special interview series called She Roars. Yes, you heard it right. It's She Roars. She Roars is our segment where we will be talking to our inspirations. These are women who have worked hard, overcome obstacles, generally just preserved in life. So they stood strong and never gave up. They roared to, the, to achieve their dreams and reach the goals they wanted to go to. Today, we welcome our first guest, famous designer, Kamali Mehta. Kamali studied fashion at Delhi's prestigious uh, Pearl Academy. But as she will tell you, her interest in fashion started way before that. In 2010, Kamali, along with her sister, launched Kamali Couture, which specializes in glamorous and elegant gowns for weddings and other occasions. Hi, Kamali. Welcome to our show. Hi, Namita. How are you? Good. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for coming. As a friend of yours, what I always find inspiring, and I've told you this, is you keep redefining yourself, molding yourself with every new venture. And that's not, you know, for everybody. As we've seen in this short video, which we played at the beginning of the segment, you have launched a new brand called Kamali Pret. So what inspired you to change the direction of your fashion wear? Because you were in bridal wear before that. So I realized that, you know, uh, women were coming to me for special occasions and uh, those were few and far apart. And I developed special relationships with them during the time that they were with me because every outfit takes about two to three months to make. But after that, we would kind of lose base with each other. And I feel that clothing should be an expression of your personality on a day-to-day -day basis, not just on those special days of your life. And they would call me and for help uh, regarding that. And I didn't have a, a, a collection to offer. Uh, Couture was very, very time consuming and it drained me out. So even though there was a need for bread and everyday clothing, I was not able to cater to it. It was also one of my biggest dreams. I always wanted to make clothing which was comfortable, which helped women feel confident and help them express themselves on a daily basis. And so in lockdown, <laughs> while I was sitting at home, I realized that this was the time I had the additional extra time that I needed to kind of, you know, design the collection and think it through, strategize it. And that's what I did. Nice. Wow. Amazing. Um, that sounds like, you know, more like our styles. Right, Simrit? Yeah. Absolutely, right? Yeah. And, you know, Kamali, as cliche as it sounds, everyone's journeys are different. So what inspired you to choose fashion? And was there a moment when you knew you wanted to pursue fashion? So, you know, as a young kid, I was a very lazy child. <laughs> I really had my ambition. Uh, all I was a housewife and not just an ordinary housewife, a housewife by probably Europe, who attended ballroom dances and, you know, dressed oh, wow. up. Wow, fairy tales. Oh, my God. I want that life. <laughs> I still want that uh, life. I, even I want it. <laughs> my, uh, at that point, and shuttled between London and Africa, and her husband was in the UN, so she would tell me about all these gala events that she would go to. And that's what I dreamt of being, you know. Uh, a house with servants, drivers, children running around. That's what it was. Oh, wow. And uh, I never discussed it with anybody. But uh, as I turned 10, I think it was around 10 or 11, my mom sat me down one day and she said that you need to have a career. And I was like, career? Like, that doesn't fit into my plan. I don't want a career. And she said, oh, nothing wow. doing. A career, you need your money. You need to be independent. Life is unpredictable. And no matter what we do for you or what your husband and his family might do for you, I need to be confident about my daughter and her capabilities. And I was like, oh God, 
there's a twist <laughs> in my <laughs> oh no <laughs> yeah then uh, my dad is a ca so she wanted me to become a ca and kind of take over the company and i was like no way that's not happening and uh, she didn't let go you know she uh, made sure that she sat me down almost every morning trying to figure out what i wanted to do or trying to convince me to become a ca and um, it took her about 8 to 10 months to kind of give up hope on me becoming a ca basically and once that happened you know uh, she started looking at other opportunities career wise or trying to engage me in things to understand my interests um at that point she was into garments and she used to work with a lot of designers and help them get footing uh, in their career or help them get a you know break so i started assisting her because my brother was getting married and he needed clothes and i i just said i'll come to the factory to choose what i want to wear and things just fell into place i fell in love with the with the concept of a uh, change with the concept of transformation of how you know when i went on a monday i saw this ton of fabric and by friday it had converted into a garment it had life it had it had it said something and it could transform my personality and that's what i fell in love with i found that very very exciting and then i told her that that's what i want to come and from then onwards i think i was by the time i decided i was around 12 from 12 to 18 i think i assisted her at home and in the factories i learned a lot uh, and my love just grew and that's how i kind of did what i wanted to do obviously there were many other career paths that you know crossed my mind at that point and they were all connected to the passions that i had i wanted to be a pilot because i wanted to travel so everything was connected to that but nothing really came from the heart nothing really made me wake up and say okay today i want to do this i think fashion did that for me more than fashion it was the craft nice you're so lucky to have like a mom who was directing you and she recognized your flaws and strengths so early i mean at 12 years old i remember my biggest you know worry was ki mera favorite which is my favorite cartoon it's like hilarious that you had so much vision or she had so much vision to direct you early on um of course yes. that offer still stands for anybody watching three european princes we're all bang on we want to still be the european <laughs> exactly any <Yeah>. time <laughs> i'd love that life i credit your success a lot to your mom right because she introduced you to fabric yeah. thought you like you fell in love with fabric and that was uh, via your mom right but this journey is not that easy is it i mean no journey is so i'm sure you faced a lot of challenges what was your biggest personal challenge um see i was all lazy i'm going to stick with that because <laughs> very lazy and i'm still today that you know i have not achieved as much as i really can so when i did decide to actually start my own business they were very very skeptical they were not happy about it because i don't come from a business background and they always found this a very uh, you know not a very stable source of income they wanted me to have a professional career have a job have some kind of degree and i was not built to be kind of caged or you know have boundaries i wanted every day to be exciting and different so when i did decide to start my own unit uh, there was a lot of you know like no nothing doing this that and the other and what if it fails as it if it fails you get me married it's so simple there's a backup plan so there's this for me it's a win win situation but i need to try and i need to figure out this for myself you know it's not about you so very hesitantly they did uh, kind of let me do it but at the back of their mind it was always like no we have to get you married we have to get you married so i said yeah all right fine i mean i have no issues with that but that only took center stage you know it became all about marriage and less about what i wanted to achieve uh-huh. or where i was going uh, and that disturbed me a lot because i was struggling anyway that stream considering the fact that i don't come from a business family or from a family who you know has some kind of a so thing for me was new 
uh, and very, very exciting. And I wanted to focus on that. And every time I came back home, the talk was only about marriage and oh God. how it was going to change my life and how maybe the boys family would not accept my career. So that was a big, big struggle for me. That is the struggle. Yeah. And I guess, uh, I mean, I feel something very similar at my place also, you know, the talk of marriage with girls so often used to happen. Yeah, it was like that is their uh, life uh, time, like goal that they want to just achieve it and then just relax <laughs> as yeah. a parent. They just want to do that. Yeah. So, uh, Kavali, uh, I'm wondering, was there a moment in uh, in time when your parents recognized your talents and your hard work? Yeah, so, you know, I uh, my first exhibition actually bombed oh, wow. at 21, even after I had fought with them and, you know, done all of that. And um, I'm somebody who always takes failure as a learning experience. So I sat myself down, I made a strategy and uh, I made notes about what I had done and uh, why it didn't do well. And I realized that I was not catering to the right market. So I decided to take about three years off from uh, before I launched my brand again to study the market. And I set up a tailoring unit, encouraged all my neighbors, my friends, my mom's friends, extended circle to come get their clothes stitched from me and designed. I just wanted to understand the taste of, you know, people. And uh, once I was ready, I got my sister on board and that's a whole different story. Uh, you can probably ask her about it. But once she came on board, um, she booked an exhibition instantaneously. She said, we're not doing this home production, garage designer kind of job. So she booked an exhibition and at that time, Olive was uh, very popular. The kind of crowd that they attracted was the kind of crowd that we wanted to cater to. Uh, and, and honestly, that's the only amount of money I had to kind of book, book a stall. So we booked a stall and uh, I worked very, very hard to you know go there. And my parents were there at that exhibition. And it was just like a flea market, not really an exhibition. And dad bumped into a lot of his friends there. And uh, he saw a lot of his friends buy from me. And when he saw that, he was shocked because he knew that the wives are very, very particular about fashion, about quality, about, you know, the kind of people or designers they bought from. And I don't think he could digest that. But next morning when he woke, and the next morning when he woke up, he said, if they're buying from you, then you must be doing something right. And if you're doing something right, then I want to support you. And I'm willing to, you know, invest in your business. And I said, no, I don't want your investment. You didn't believe in me. I believe in me. I take that money, but I'll take it like a loan. And I'll give it back to you. Because this is my belief in myself. And so we took that loan. Uh, and also another something very exciting happened at Olive, you know, uh, I was in awe of Fashion Week and Bridal Asia at that point. And uh, my clothes were more oriented towards Bridal Asia. So Bridal Asia is an exhibition. And both these forums are very difficult to get through to because they only believed in the best or they believed in quality product, quality design. India was changing at that time. So they did not want run of the mill regular people, you know, to exhibit. And they contacted me next day. And they said, we want you to be part of our exhibition. And I was like, what? See? Because I didn't buy the clothes. I was doing resort wear and I was doing kurtis and, you know, pret. So I said, well, if they've asked me, then let's go for it. Right. And the next, I think this was around in March and Bridal Asia was in October. But those five, six months were torture for me because I had to work 24 7 to make sure <laughs> that what my dad, I was able to not only pay back, but also prove to myself that the decision I had taken was right. So I think that six months, I had a nervous breakdown. But once Bridal Asia happened, my life changed. Wow. That's amazing though, right? Like your dad came and said, Yele, paise, you know, go. DDLJ moment. Ja kamali ja. Jile apni zindagi. And then Bridal Asia contacts you. So you really flourished from that point on, right? I mean, yeah. that was when you, you realized your vision was correct. 
so to speak. So was that when yeah. you felt that you'd arrived somewhere in life, like you'd achieved what you wanted to? Uh, no. So Simrit, my vision is uh, for life. It's not for a moment or an event. Mm. So that was probably the first uh, stepping stone to where I wanted to go. But it was not the end point, you know. Mm. And uh, I wanted to do lots of things. But like I said, because I didn't come from a business background, for me, every day was a learning experience. And uh, every event was one step closer to my goal, end goal. I, to be honest, don't even know what the end goal is because I am enjoying every day, every moment of what I do. So as long as people like my stuff, as long as I like what I do, I think that's my mini goal for every day. That's good. Irrespective of the fact that you have achieved a lot and it's obviously, obviously because of your constant hard work along this path, uh, do you have any regrets that you could share with us? So once so I'm, I'm a very, very focused person, you know, once I put my head and heart to something, uh, you cannot, you just cannot deviate me. And so once I decided to do this, um, a lot of it also meant proving to myself and also to my family that even though I'm lazy, <laughs> I can achieve what I want to achieve from bed if it meant to, meant to happen from bed. Um, and I got consumed completely with my work. Whether I'm sleeping or awake, I was constantly thinking about my work. Uh, my entire social life changed. Um, my friends were getting married. They were setting up homes. They were having babies. So my path changed completely. I lost out on a lot of stuff that normal girls would have done at that time. You know, uh, socialized with people their age or uh, travel together, whatever. I'm busy at work 24-7. And I regret not balancing my life. That's something I regret. I should have taken out an hour or so for myself on a daily basis uh, to kind of do things that I love. But at that point, I love my work so much. So that you, you actually, just could... no, but do you regret not getting married? Do you regret that that, that never happened or <laughs> hasn't happened yet? Yeah. First of all, you're very young and you could still do that. But have you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I did feel that, you know, I could see everybody living a happy life, a more content life. And my friends were working too. It's not like they weren't working and they were able to balance it. So that, yes, I do regret that I was not able to balance my life or, you know, uh, get married or live that European dream that I wanted to. Uh, that's something I do. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I know you and I love who you are, but I still get surprised. You keep mentioning how lazy you are. So what motivates you to get out of bed every day and like go and do so much different things? We're all lazy. And I mean, many of us are lazy and are resistant to change Ew. currently, right? But you're redefining yourself. So what excites you to make those changes or what excites you to go and do, create something new every day? So like I said in the beginning, you know, the entire process of fabric to garment is about transformation. It's about change. Fabric goes through many, many changes. It could be dyeing, it could be printing, it could be embroidery. Before it really becomes a product, it's a constant change. And that is what excites me. Change and transformation. So when I get up in the morning, um, that's what I look forward to. As to how can I change myself to become better? What can I add to myself to, you know, uh, change as a person. Uh, amongst one of my regrets is the fact that I was a very camera shy person. I was an introvert, you know, while other uh, colleagues of mine in the design field were marketing themselves along with their product. I never did that. I, I chose to stay in the factory. And that's a change I have brought about in myself over the years. Like sitting with you and talking to you on this digital platform is not something that I could have done years ago. Really? I'm a very, very shy person. Yeah. I couldn't wow. talk about my life or I couldn't talk about my journey because 
that story for me was very personal i didn't want the world to know i didn't want the world to understand so that's a change i brought about you know being able to come to the store and talk to the client is a big change for me that i have incorporated recently my sister shruti deals with all of the clients and they know her as kamali a lot of the clients know her as kamali and she's happy with it and she moves on that because it's <laughs> difficult to explain to the client why the designer doesn't want to meet you you know it's just because i'm shy and i'm happy being in the factory so every day for me is is an explosion of or or a, or something that i'm trying to burst so i make a list of everything that i want to change or improvise and every day i work towards one thing and i set a goal for the year so that how do you how do you make lot. those changes uh, sorry to interrupt how do you make those changes like how did you change yourself to become more camera friendly or to like make your point so simrit i truly believe in the power of the universe once you decide to do something that's you don't need to look further the universe will bring those people to you and that has happened with me repeatedly over the years whatever i have wanted to do starting from bridal asia they approached i didn't have to go to them wow. right olives approached me i didn't have to go to them so i believe that whenever i am ready to do something people are thrown into my paradigm by the universe and they will teach me whatever i want to learn in whatever capacity they can or connect me to uh, you know people and things so i did courses last year because i had time on my hand wow so courses to kind of help me change the way i think or uh, you know kind of burst the blocks that i have um and yeah that helped me a lot wow wow that's commendable you know i have seen in these movies and all how the personality development happen and they go join some courses it's like like i don't know whether exactly it it happens in true life but as you mentioned you know it it's really commendable and you know most of us are aware of our strengths and identifying our weaknesses and actively change ourselves is not an easy task no you know especially when so many of us refuse to change and we say oh you know we are too old to do this that's not who we are or you know publicly acknowledging yes your weaknesses is something even more inspiring kamali absolutely really so uh, you know uh, along with this so uh, i'm wondering uh, you know you are in career that focuses on weddings and as we know our society places a lot of value on being married right so have you ever been like judged for staying single as you are into this whole you know kind so I, of a wedding business yeah i don't think i've judged for being single but i've always been asked why i didn't want to settle down or why i didn't want to get married and everybody including my relatives and my clients have always wished you know the best for me so they've always suggested ways to make uh, this journey of finding a partner easier whether it means giving me a number of a pandit whether it means somebody <laughs> uh you know i have such lovely cute clients and aunties who have done that in the past they won't do it directly with me because they feel that i might get offended so they do it through my sister they'll give her a number of a pandit this one uh, lady you know she makes these specialized uptans one day she sent a bowl full of uptan to shruti and she said i am very famous for oh what i do yeah i said i am really famous for what i do and don't think that this is cheap you know my uptans go to hong paris <laughs> but i am giving you this for kamali i need one <laughs> that's so yeah. cute that's so cute that's yeah, so fine now yeah. very cute very cute so they okay all, they've that's always good. wished well yeah so that's nice right like they're giving out positive vibes they're like theek hai koi baat nahi it will happen when it happens that's a great thing about our society that we all sit back at the end of the day and say okay chalo ho jayega jab hoega you know ah, exactly that's, that's a very cool thing 
All right, so we've organized a fun lightning round to get to know some, you know, interesting media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, but we were lightning round means you gotta kind of give the answers quickly. Okay, it's a very short okay. one, but let's do this. Um, and we want honest ones. We don't want like fake. Acha, what's gonna look good on the camera? My bounces. All right. <laughs> okay. Ready? Yeah. Um, first celebrity crush. George Clooney and he still is. Oh, I mine too. <laughs> I, love I know. I just noticed that. I know Navitas is as well. Cool. Um, yeah. Ideal man. Ideal man. Very uh, someone who just lets you be you. That's it. Okay. Someone who does not expect you to fit into the mold of what he's been taught uh, or what he's learned from society. Okay. The weirdest date you've been on? The weirdest stage? Date. Date? Uh, not really. I don't think I've been on any weird dates as such. Because uh, I always clean them before I go. <laughs> I always... <laughs> and so I something's got to be strange. An ex-girlfriend turning up or something. <laughs> no. I guess that happens mostly in movies. <laughs> Simran, I feel that I don't know. I, I think Kamali's forgetting. She's she told me about an interesting one, but I think she's forgetting right now. When a okay. friend turned up and started crying there at your date. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. That's something. <laughs> she just turned up and started crying. And I Sorry? don't understand what's happening. So I don't know what happened, to be honest, because he just said, I don't want to tell you. I said, okay, that's okay. <laughs> All right. You have, this is an easy one for you. This is more up your alley. You have $1 million. You have to spend it in a weekend on yourself only. How will you do it? I'm going to buy a villa with a lush green. Uh, I have already visualized this, okay? <laughs> so, so it's a villa with a garden all around. One part of the villa is where I stay and the other part of the villa is where I mentor young minds uh, with the, in fashion probably because that's what I know best and help them achieve things that they want to, connect them to the right people and so that they don't go through everything that I went through. I would like life to be easier for them. So I've already visualized this villa and I'm working towards earning it and taking it so even a spontaneous million dollar villa like very thought out and very you know yes. practical for kamali come on <laughs> all right good good that is that's i i mean i like it honestly speaking i, my, I would have said i'd go on on a trip and Same here. Yeah. stayed on the best of the hotels and had like blast <laughs> but this is like amazing yeah. Okay, what do you crave for? What do I crave for? I crave for peace and companionship with me. Companionship <laughs> with you? With peace. <laughs> if it makes sense. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. fine. What would you like to person? Who, sorry, who would you personally like to design for? Oh, that's a tough one, actually. <laughs> that's a really tough one because, um, like I said in the beginning as well, you know, I like the process of transformation. I don't like designing for perfect women or women who already have it exactly. all sorted so out. So who would you like to design? Yeah. So the tagline of my brand is, you know, for the conscious woman. Like us, see? I'm like, <laughs> yes. So she wants to design for it, Navita. No, but who? Do you think the transformation would be amazing, in, right? Because, like, if you say these celebrities, they're already quite, you know, well groomed, right? right? Yeah. So then in my head, when I think, I'm like, yeah, you know, the more issues you have with yourself, I would like to design for you <laughs> because I'd like that there is nothing wrong, you know. But women find issues with themselves so that is what excites me is trying to you know and it and the second part of my tagline is it you know my brand is for you me 
and us. It's not for the celebrities. It's not for the perfect people. It's for you, me, and us. It's for all of us. So, not one person. No, I can't pinpoint and say. <laughs> okay. All right. What's the first thing you notice about the opposite sex? The way they're groomed. Grooming. But yeah. where do you look She's first well to see that he's well? Yeah. Sorry. Where do you look first to make sure he's well groomed? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and last one, what's the sexiest trait you have? I have, uh, I think it's my honesty combined with charm. Uh, I've been told on many dates that, you know, wow. oh, oh my God, you're so real. And I'm like, <laughs> What That's does that mean? Compliment, right? That's the biggest compliment. Yeah. It's good. Good. Yeah. I think that is my sexiest term. Yeah. Mm. Well, uh, that was a wonderful QA round, and I really <laughs> you know, enjoyed it. And, and we got to know so much more about Kamali, which <laughs> would, we wouldn't have you know, figured it out from the earlier uh, video uh, yeah. things that uh, Kamali mentioned. So thank you so much, Kamali. I love how candid you have been with us and truly you are an inspiration to all of us. You are Thanks. brilliant and your unwavering determination yeah. truly, truly shines through, That's honestly. Cool. And it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on our debut segment, She Roars. You really roared, Absolutely. you know, and you've achieved and you've, you've reached this, you know, at this point where it's your, your true inspiration to all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Namrita. This is so lovely to hear. And I've really enjoyed my time with you today. It's been so much fun. Same here. Good. Thank you. Thank you for coming. We'll uh, look forward to maybe having you again in the future with us. Mm. But that's all on Talk To Us today. We look forward to hearing from all of you guys out there. Please tell us what you thought of the She Roar segment uh, by sending us an email at hello at talktoustoday.com or use the comment section down there below and let your friends know where to find us. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. Stay notified of our new videos every Friday at 6 p.m. Thanks for joining us on Talk To Us Today. Good Remember day. to talk about Talk, talk To Us Today. Talk and Keep smiling. Keep shining, keep laughing, keep laughing, <laughs> and most importantly, keep talking. Yeah. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.